fiber type is collagen fibers. They're tightly packed, and so because of the um, nature of how there's so many collagen fibers packed tightly, because of the high water content of cartilage, it, it has this frosted appearance. So you can't make out the individual fibers, but the frosted pink is all the collagen fibers. That's kind of how I describe it. It doesn't always look pink, but it's collagen fibers. And, um, the cell type is chondrocyte lacuna. function of this, of all cartilages, well, it supports, reinforces, it, it's resilience, it cushions, it resists compressive stress. They show a picture of a uh, rib cage, because uh, where it's colored in there, the, the ribs are bones, but the cartilage that connects the ribs to the breastplate, the sternum, is cartilage, and it's hyaline cartilage. So the costal cartilages are a good example where you, where you have them, location. cartilages, um, the tracheal rings, so imagine your um, trachea is just a windpipe, and you have these C-shaped rings of hyaline cartilage that wrap around it. C-shaped tracheal rings this is another uh, good example. because the trachea vents air through it, and um, that would collapse your, your airway. But the stiff C-shaped cartilage rings keeps the airway patent or open. It's all right, keeps airway open. I said patent. That's a word that means open in anatomy. Right, so let's compare this cartilage to other cartilages. Uh, this next one is elastic cartilage. Well, the dark fibers shown in the picture uh, are the elastic fibers, and you still have the chondrocytes and the cuda. The elastic fibers chondrocytes and lacuna. They have a 
it, um, we have it in ear and epiglottis. That's where you find them. Well, we'll look at the epiglottis. The epiglottis um, is a flap of cartilage above the glottis, which is the entry uh, to your airway. <clears throat> a flap of cartilage above glottis. The glottis is a little V-shaped opening right to your trachea. And so this flap of cartilage, every time you swallow, it, it guards the airway. It literally covers it. Okay, so it has to be very flexible and elastic. So every time you swallow, it gu guards the airway. That's its function. So what do your ears do? They, they funnel sound. Final sound wave. But anyways, the tissue, I don't really like that picture actually. This picture is better. Let me turn the lights off. Look for the, the almost black color. And this is a lower magnification. And I see other tissue types here. But the elastic cartilage with the chondrocytes and lacuna is in this black area here. Uh, these tiny bubbles, well, which one are the tiny bubbles? Adipose. So we see different tissue types here. I may have you identify the adipose tissue. I may have you identify the elastic cartilage. Here's a higher mag of the elastic cartilage. The cell type uh, is the chondrocyte lacuna. So this is the cell. The little dark spot is the nucleus. The white space around the cell is what? lacuna. It's the space that contains the cell. So the black fibers are elastic fibers. I see a little adipocyte there. This is um, higher magnification. I believe it's 400. Okay. Next slide. Fibrocartilage. show you is the, um, the fibers crisscross. So it's like if you have one layer of fibers that maybe the fibers are oriented this way. In the next layer, the fibers will be at a 90 degree angle. Maybe they're oriented this way. And in the next layer, they'll be oriented 90, 90 degrees to that. And in the next layer, I mean, they crisscross again. They're a 90 degree angle. So you keep getting this alternating crisscross orientation. Um, honestly, I didn't draw it that well. Yeah. Usually when I try to draw, it's an epic failure. So uh, okay, let, me, let, me sh let me show you. Some, some year I'm going to figure out these dang lights. Here we go. Now, I took this picture. It's not from your book. The ones from your book, I don't even like them. Okay. So study the pictures I provide you for fibro cartilage. Do you see the crisscross? Just keep staring at it. Because that's how you're going to identify this as fibro cartilage. So I see a layer right here, and they're kind of all going this way. And this layer, I see they're kind of going this way. And this outer layer, they're kind of going that way. So you kind of have to like 
see that. Otherwise, you'll misidentify it. But if you get the crisscross thing, oh yeah, that's the fireable cartilage. Okay, raise your hand if you see it. Okay, some of you see it. That's great. I'll just want I'm just curious. Okay, what we're looking at here is a piece of intervertebral disc. That's the location I want you to know. Now, um, if, I, if I drew a whole disc, these are literally disc-shaped discs. They're fiber cartilage, and they're in between your backbones of your spine. And so they help absorb the, the compressive forces of, of gravity of you walking and running. Okay. But if you were to cut right through the disc between two backbones and, and look at the disc, what you would see is this jelly center, uh, which isn't cartilage, but it's called the nucleus opulsus. surrounding the nucleus propulsus, a jelly center, like growth rings looking at a tree trunk. Is the annulus fibrosis. This is your fiber cartilage. Okay. And this is where all the layers, they kind of crisscross, right? They kind of like crisscross, crisscross, like that. That's kind of what you see in the picture there. I remember I drew this picture in lecture when I took anatomy, and I didn't believe it because he, he didn't have a picture of it. And I still didn't believe it through my entire undergraduate career. I thought, oh, that's not true. You, you don't see that in nature. It's... And then I came here, and our slide collection is a little better, actually. And I, and I actually saw, I said, oh, wait, that, that's right. I was just looking at that slide all wrong. So I'll show it to you again later. That's the third kind of cartilage, the fibro cartilage. I want to move on to bone. And we have a whole chapter on bone. So I'm not going to say much about it. Um, I'll, I'll kind of save my details for that chapter. So again, I won't teach any details. Just look at it. Does it look like bone to you? Yeah. Just memorize the image. And I'll teach you all the fun stuff when you get to that chapter. For now, this is bone. I want to write one word on the board, bone. Where's the location of bone? In your bones. <laughs> if you want to call it a tissue, it's an osseous tissue. Ossification is the process of, it's actually cartilage. Bone is cartilage that has been uh, ossified. It just kind of uh, absorbs calcium phosphate crystals, and that helps give bone its rigidity and strength. So we'll talk a lot about bone in that chapter. Here's a picture of bone that I took. Now this happens to be dry bone. There are living cells in bone. But bone have, have lacuna too. Remember the chondrocytes in lacuna? Here's a lacuna right there. It's the, this black space. There's no cells there because in the process of making uh, dry bone slides, there's no organic tissue. It's all dry bone. Okay. So just call that bone and you're okay. Okay, I'm going to move on to blood. Like bone, I won't say too much about blood because there's a whole chapter on blood 
and you'll, and you'll get to it. But for now, I think um, I, I should explain a little bit. What is whole blood? Whole blood is, you know, it's about, it's plasma, it's what are called the formed elements, which are the blood cells. It's a little more plasma, maybe 55%. At 45%. Those are kind of textbook numbers. You can kind of spin blood down. All the blood cells will kind of spin to the bottom. They're all red because of the red blood cells. Uh, and you have the straw colored plasma. In a, in a slide, in a drop of blood, you only see the formed elements. You can identify no plasma components. Okay. And you have uh, red blood cells, erythrocytes. You have platelets, and you have the white blood cells, the leukocytes. There's different kinds of white blood cells. I guess what you should know by looking at the picture is the cell without a nucleus are the erythrocytes. Red blood cells have no nucleus. It's kind of spit out in the bone marrow before it enters circulation. And you'll learn about that later, but in just identifying them, they have this kind of illuminated center because they're kind of thin in the middle. A red blood cell is like a flattened pancake. If you look at it from the side view, they're, they're more flat in the middle. It's called a biconcave shape. Biconcave, which means Concave means curved in, so it's curved in on both sides. So that way, when you sh shine light through it, the light appears more brightly in the middle than on the sides. These cells are shaped that way so they can navigate through the small blood vessels easier. They're kind of stretchy and thin, and they're just filled with hemoglobin, which we learned as the molecule that binds oxygen, because that's their job, you know, gas transport. Uh, so on the slide, just be able to identify all the red blood cells. They outnumber all the other cells a thousand to one, right? So mostly what you see in a drop of blood at any given field of vision are the red blood cells. I call them urethrocytes because in anatomy, the, the word root urethro means red, and leuco means white. Red blood cell, white blood cell, describing the color. So what color are leukocytes? They're, they're, they are white, right? The pus, the white pus from an infected cut is white pus because of the white blood cells trying to fight the infection. That's how you know it's infected. Uh, okay, well, any cell with the, the, this, these bright purplish colors and you see these oddly shaped nuclei here, and this large round nucleus here. Those are going to be the category of, of white blood cells. And um, let me turn off the lights. And let's kind of look at the arrows are pointing to two types of, of white blood cells. Here in here. I guess for this class, it's just called white blood cells. You, you'll learn their names later. This is eosinophil, it's a lymphocyte, but let's just call them white blood cells. So every other kind of cell, all of these, what are they? The red blood cells. The platelets are little flecks of cytoplasm. They're not whole cells. They're, they're literally um, pinches of cytoplasm that pinched off a big mama cell, they literally call the cell a mega karyocyte. And the little packs of cytoplasm that break off and circulate are the platelets. They help initiate blood clotting, but you see them as little flecks there, like there, there. They don't look like nothing, but if you know what you're looking for, you'll know that there are platelets. So know, so know those three things. A couple more slides of blood. So the arrows again pointing to white blood cells, those are neutrophils. Okay, boom, red blood cells and all the little flecks, platelets. Big old monocyte, that's a white blood cell. Okay. I'm 
my pointing to there? It's a big fleck. <laughs> it's a platelet. Platelet, platelet, these are all white blood cells. Like red blood cells, sorry. Red blood cells. Okay, so we did bone, we did blood, and now we're going to do um, muscle. There's three types of muscle. This is skeletal muscle. Now skeletal muscle is called such because it moves your skeleton. Skeletal muscle, the, the cells, the muscle cells are elongated and they're shaped like fibers. So sometimes books will refer to the, the cells of this tissue as myocytes because myo means muscle and site means cell. Uh, most of the time I refer to them as muscle fibers, which is the cell of this tissue. And again, we have a whole chapter devoted to muscle tissue, so I'll just give you um, an overview just enough to help you identify the tissue in this chapter. The reason why I say muscle fiber is the cells are like these cylindrically shaped fibers. They're not round cells. That's kind of what you're seeing there. And notice the nuclei are shoved to the side. So they're, they're multinucleated. It's got these long fibers. The nuclei are kind of, are kind of shoved the side. Okay. Multinucleated. And the contractile proteins, they overlap in a way that give this muscle a striped appearance. So we call them striations. Striated muscle. Sometimes it's just called striated muscle, not skeletal muscle, referring to the stripes. So, um, kind of draw some vertical line there. So the striations are due to the overlapping of the contractile proteins, just gives the muscle a striped appearance, caused by how uh, the contractile proteins overlap. So look for the striations. If I'm confused and I'm not sure what I'm looking at, if I think it's muscle, I look for striations. Okay. And um, well, the function of muscle, your, your body is about 80% muscle, of this kind of muscle. It's most of your body's muscle mass. And uh, the purpose of muscles is to, they insert via tendons onto bone. And when they contract, they shorten and move joints. So muscles do one thing, they contract, they shorten, they, they, they pull, they never push. So when they contract, they pull. So when you contract, the muscle pulls, moves joints. That's, that's why it's called skeletal muscle. You're, you're moving your skeleton in that way. And you do this with conscious thought. You know, I think, wiggle my big toe, and I can do it. So it's called voluntary muscle as well for that reason. So this muscle is voluntary. Conscious thought. Let me turn the lights off. Here's a picture I took from one of our slides. 
So look at how it's multinucleated. I'll point to the nuclei. You know, there they're all over the place. And do you see how the striations are going up and down like that? But the fibers run horizontal across the board. Maybe in the back you can't see it, but you know, when you look at it under the scope or when you look at this close up on your computer screen, the striations should be seen. You usually have to go to 400x to see it. Okay. Next slide. Cardiac muscle. found in one place, the heart. The skeletal muscle, I'll teach all the skeletal muscle, well not all of them, but I teach a lot of them. And uh, we'll get into the details of muscles later in the course. Cardiac muscle, uh, you'll, you'll study again when you study the heart. Here we just want to see what the heart muscle looks like under the microscope. Um, so it goes without saying, I'll say it anyways, the heart is the location of this muscle. And um, well, if you look at that picture, the cardiac muscle fibers, they branch more. So maybe this branches, you know, to two other cells. Um, maybe this branches. So if you have an action potential that's traveling and it travels and depolarizes uh, this cell, it excites this cell, then as the, we call it depolarization, as it spreads, if you have a nice intricate branching system, it can spread easier throughout the heart muscle so that the whole organ can um, contract the way it's supposed to. We call it the cardiac cycle. So when you study the cardiac cycle, the signal is spread easier. Signal spread is aided by branched cells, that's basically what I'll say. Now there's a structure that helps the signal spread. It's called the intercalated disk. You usually see them as these vertical dark bars. Intercalated discs. Well, they're important because the heart muscle, they don't have like tendons and skeletons to interact with. And when they, when the heart muscle contracts and generates pressure, the intercalated discs acts as a glue to help keep the heart muscle from tearing. How do they bind to the aorta? I'm sorry, what was that idea here? How do they bind to the aorta? Yes. Nucleus, and I see many of them, multinucleated. So they're, they act as a glue because really they have desmosomes. The desmosomes help glue the tissue together. But also, there are gap junctions in the intercalated discs that help the signal spread easier. So no desmosomes, gap junctions. Desmosomes, gap junctions, 
multinucleated, they are also striated. You see striations. However, your heart muscle is not voluntary muscle. It, it is not. I mean, your heart beats on its own, right? Involuntary. Okay, let's move on. Smooth muscle. No, no, let's not move on. Here's a picture of cardiac muscle. It's a lower mag than the previous picture. And if you look at it, try to notice the striations and try to notice the orientation of the intercalated discs. The discs are vertical lines shown here. Okay, now there's many nuclei. So a common mistake is I, I point to a disc and you put nucleus. The, the two look nothing like each other. Uh, so identify this as cardiac muscle. And so what's your clue? How do you know it's cardiac muscle and not skeletal muscle? Well, they have the, the intercalated discs. Okay. Otherwise, it looks just like skeletal muscle. So you have to think of the clue that's going to like help you identify it correctly. The third type of muscle is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, um, as the name implies, it's not striated. It looks smooth. So let's just say it, there's no striations. Smooth muscle cells, the cell is spindle shaped with a solitary nucleus. Right in the middle. And um, yeah, it's not that these cells don't have contractile proteins. They do. It's just that the contractile proteins don't look striped under the microscope. So it has contractile proteins. They just don't appear striated. So if this muscle contracts, maybe the whole thing kind of bulges. So you kind of like get shorter that way. And these are arranged in many layers. And usually they line your, your visceral organs of tube. They line the tubes of most of your organ systems. Like you see smooth muscle in the digestive tract, GI tract, uh, I mean, you see it in bronchioles, tiny airways, blood vessels. Not so much, yeah, you see it in the repro tract, in urinary tract, in many different locations. And because they line tubes, and a tube is usually circular shaped, more or less. And, and you're arranged in a circle. A, a lot of times when these muscles contract as a layer within a, in, in a tube wall, they can constrict or dilate the tube, which has different physiological effects. Constrict means squeeze, dilate means open up. They constrict and dilate all these different structures. And I don't have time to go through all of them, but don't worry, you'll, you'll learn them all. Just be able to identify smooth muscle. It looks like a dense connective tissue to me, but you just have to like look at enough pictures to see. Some of the pictures I put in for examples of smooth muscle 
on this slide, look for the, the smooth pink tissue on the left. Because this is a, an entire cro uh, sectional view of small intestine, but the smooth muscle is only a layer of it. It's not here. It's mostly in these two layers here. There's actually two layers of smooth muscle here. There's a layer here, and this outer layer there is a separate layer, but they're both basically smooth muscle layers. That's small intestine. Here's a blood vessel, and um, the muscular tissue, just look for the, the smooth pink tissue. Your eyeball should be finding this here from here to there. That's the muscle layer of a, of a rather large artery. Okay. Kind of, here's a vein right next to it. But like that smooth tissue there. Smooth muscle. Here's a closer a picture of a blood vessel. The lumen of the blood vessel. So right there. So these are blood cells. Red blood cells. And all this from here to here is the smooth muscle. Okay. Do you see little strands of dark tissue there? That's elastic tissue. So you have elastic tissue mixed in with the pink smooth muscle tissue. But, you know, we're learning this mostly for the smooth muscle. Okay, that's an artery. Why, why is there elastic tissue with the smooth tissue? In arteries, you want the elastic tissue to handle the, uh, the outflow of the heart. So when the blood is ejected, it can expand a little bit. All right. What I want to do now is I want to present all the slides that are going to be on your quiz Monday. If you look at the schedule, I have a lab quiz scheduled for Monday. And um, I want it to be on our slides. So I, I, I started picking them out and I want to go through them now. So how this works is uh, I'll show you our slides. I'm not going to be at the board writing. I, I'm going to be there sitting there. I'm just going to show you. That's it. I get to show you that's it. But I will take a picture for you since we're set up for it. And I'll make those pictures available on Canvas. And then I'll quiz you on those same pictures. What I won't do is label them for you. Uh, at that point, I figure you got to do something, right? I think it's enough I give you the quiz pictures. You figure out what they are, and um, you'll be okay for the quiz. But at least let me show you the order I'm going to present. Give, give me a minute here. Let's see here. So go ahead and take a two minute stretch break. I got to organize these slides. Yeah.
All right, so I'll go in that order. And um, I'll have to have the lights off the whole time so you can see it pretty good. So 
And what we'll do is we'll take a break. Um, and I want to get these available to you. When we come back from break, I do want to have a lab. And obviously, I, I can't have you look at all of these in one lab. Our labs aren't even that long. Maybe I'll choose like three and have you look at them on your microscope. And I, I want to check you off, too. And um, I want to emphasize that um, you guys are in trouble. I got an email from my colleagues that you guys, somebody, not you guys necessarily, but I'm sure maybe it was some of us, that if you put the scopes away wrong, and, and colleagues like to complain about that. <laughs> well, I need to do my job. I need to hold you accountable. So um, when, when you, I'm gonna give you a little half sheet, and I'll check you off on your half sheet. But one of the things I want you to do with you and your partner is to put your scope number on it. And I will check after today, as soon as you leave, to make sure that you put the scope away right. And I'll remind you what to do. You will lose points if you don't put it away right. So this is kind of how I make sure uh, you guys don't get me in trouble. Uh, you got to put the scopes away right. And uh, so I'll remind you of that after break. Let's look at the first slide. This is actually mesothelium. It's a good example of simple squamous epithelium. Let me get my uh, software set up. That is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, see so what we got here. We always start with low magnification. Got to something on this slide. Okay, that's low mag, and I, I can even make out the cells at low mag just looking at it here. You guys can see much of the, uh, the light. Okay, let me uh, go higher mag. This is 100x. I'm going to go to 400. Yes, good picture. So this is simple squamous epithelial tissue. Um, happens to me the mesothelium. This is the tissue that lines your body cavity. Moving on. Okay. Um, simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. I believe we're looking at kidney. Let me go to a different location. It's right here. I'm trying to find a cuboid epithelium with the microvilli. This is a good one here. All right. Good enough. 
Let me point out the micro relay to you. I want to make sure you know what you're looking at here. See that because I have to put them all together in a little box. Okay. I'll let me go back to where I was. I'm sorry. I set up a little different from what I'm used to. Identify it as simple cuboidal with microvilli. This is a good one. See that fuzziness on the inside? That's the microvilli. The first one didn't say it, but I gotta go back and take a picture of it. Usually it says, as I, go, I go along, it did not. So I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. So we have that first one again. I'll be quick. Process takes longer when I have to save and upload for you, so be patient. It's worth worth the wait. tissue, columnar, let's take a look at that, is low. What you're looking at is oviduct, and um, the lumen is not a round circle. It's uh, the mucosa folds up. So there's all these nooks and crannies. For the egg to wait for the sperm to fertilize it, you, you got to go to 400x to see cells. This is 100x. Now I'm going to focus in on an edge. Say, I'm going to focus in on that edge.
Okay, moving on. I just want to make sure that I'm going to be able to find these. But to go back to where I was, tell me if you see cilia. Yeah. yeah. It's barely there. It's kind of sparse. I see a little tuft of it here. You know, a little thing of it there. So you can definitely say it's cilia. I see much more there. But this is the tissue right there. Simple columnar epithelial tissue. There's definitely cilia. From the oviduct, and moving on. <coughs> oh, this one's my favorite. It's like a really long one. Well, that's not why it's my favorite, but there's a lot of things to identify. Let me get some lens wipe, because um, I don't know if you noticed, a lot of dust on these slides. And this can really help you. When you try to look at them yourself during lab today. All right, so. There's the tissue. Upside down, let's put it right side up. This way. Here's a low mag, it's the tracheal wall. It's the whole tracheal wall. So, see where my mouse is? That's actually hyaline cartilage. But that's not really why we're looking at this. I'm interested in the epithelium up here. Okay, this is low mag. I can even see goblet cells. I think those are goblet cells. So there we go. Let's look at that. So low. Medium. High. That's hyaline cartilage. Let's go to the top. Right here. Huh, I don't know what that is. It's kind of interesting. Because I'm not really sure. Let's just go to a normal part. Picture. It's from trachea. So um, I would identify it as ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue with goblet cells. I think I've got a few here. Definitely right in there. I see goblet cells in there. I see a little one in there. I see very dense cilia. This is the basement membrane. You should be able to identify that too. Okay. This is a simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. Those are serumucous glands, but I'm probably not going to have you identify it. I want you to identify uh, the pseudostratified epithelium. Okay, moving on. Where's it from again? Trachea. Trachea, yeah, it's a good one. Okay, moving on. Transitional. I think this is going to be ureter. The ureter is the muscular tube that carries urine from the kidney to the bladder. And we usually have a cross-sectional view of that tube. Transitional epithelium. Where is it? Come on. There's a low mag. The epithelium that we're interested in, uh, look, that's the lumen. This is the epithelial tissue lining it. Transitional. Okay, so let's go higher. This is your reader. Here's a. 
100x, let's go high. That's pretty good. Just take a picture of that. Go ahead and stop and ask questions if you have any. Was that, was that stretched out or? No, that was that is not stretched out. <coughs> yeah. But you're that's good. You remember that that's the one that could stretch out. All right, skin. This is actually thick skin from palm or sole of foot. And it's primate skin. It's keratinizing, I believe. Let's go 100x and we'll see. Okay, that's good. I'll take a picture of that. You call it keratinizing stratified squamous epithelial tissue. The keratin is from pretty much here to here. But this whole thing from bottom to top is the whole epithelium. Okay? If I just point to here, I say identify just this, oh, keratin. Okay. But if I say identify this whole thing, put keratinizing stratified squamous epithelial tissue. And done with epithelium. Let's move on to connective. hard to focus because there's many different layers and I'm thinking, well, which layer do I want to focus on? It's hard to figure out which one's the best one. Trying to find an area with decent elastic fibers. This is pretty good. Okay, we'll save it as our yellow. Identify it as areolar tissue, be able to identify collagen fibers. If I point to any pink colored fiber, like this one here, 
collagen fiber. If I point to any dark strand, what do you think it is? Elastic. What about a dark shaped thing like this? Fibroblast. Okay, that's areolar. Moving on. Adipose, you can just see the adipocytes. See them at low mag. We'll, we'll go to higher mag. That's all I see, just a wall of tiny bubbles. Let's go 400x. Those are all adipocytes, that's all I see. I'll just take a picture of that. And uh, move on. Okay. Uh, reticular tissue is next. This is the tissue that looks like a, a mesh net with a lot of cells in it. It has a fil filtration function. This is lymph node. You want to look for the blackish fibers, and you can't really see it on low mag. I see some blackish fibers here. So I'm going to zoom in on this region here. Seem a little better now. And then high mag. Yeah, it's a pretty good example of reticular uh, tissue. The reticular fibers are all the black fibers that you see and all the red things are cells. Uh, this is muscle tendon, so I'm going, to, I'm going to try to focus on the part that's tendon, because that's a good example of dense, regular connective tissue. So this is low mag. This is all skeletal muscle. Um, you got to go to the end. That's where the connective tissue, connective tissue is. That little strand on the end. I'm going to zoom in on that.
All right, that's about as good as I can get it. Uh, it's tendon, but uh, in this chapter, we're going to call this dense regular connective tissue. The orientation is regular. It's more or less they're kind of wavy going this way. Remember the uh, fiber type? Collagen. The cells, I'm not going to have you, I can't make out any individual cell. They're there, but um, that's the tissue type. Dense, regular connective tissue. It's from tendon. We'll move on. Cartilages, the hyaline cartilage. Oh, okay, so I see um, this low mag thing here. Uh, the hyaline cartilage is in the middle. On top and bottom, it looks like adipose. So let's go to the middle. I see three tissue types here. On the bottom, That's a stratified squamous epithelium. And right above it is adipose. Right, what I wanted to show you on this slide is this. This is the uh, chondrocytes and lacuna, and it's that frosted pinkish appearance. Hyaline cartilage. So I'll take a picture of that. Boom. Elastic cartilage. This is from the epiglottis, that little flap that guards the airway. All right, this is a three and one. The epithelium on top of here is a stratified squamous epithelium. I might have you identify that. This here, see this dark tissue where my mouse is? What is that? That's the cartilage, the elastic cartilage. What are the bubbles all in between? Adipose. I may have you identify all three, so I'm going to take pictures of all three. That's what I usually do for this slide. So I'm going to go high mag here. That's a stratified squamous epithelium. There's no keratin.
take a picture of that. In one shot, I got the adipose up here. Um, my mouse is up there. I don't know if you can see it. What's this tissue down here? It's the elastic cartilage. What if I have you identify this cell? The chondrocyte. What's the space around it? Yeah, just put chondrocyte and lacuna, and you'll, you'll be fine. And um, okay. Moving on. Fibrum. It's cartilage. The one that has the crisscross. See my mouse. This area right here, I see the crisscross layers. Right, right in the middle. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm starting to see the layers. Go to 400. See what it looks like. It's not very well stained, but I think we can make out the layers. Okay, that's about as good as I can get it. Fibrocartilage. So how do I identify this? One is the chondrocytes and lacuna. Those are all the cell types. Do you see how this is a layer? And the, the orientation. But then this layer right next to it, it looks different. Those fibers are at a 90 degree angle. And then this is the next layer, and then that's the next layer. So look for the layers. It's fibro cartilage, and it's from the intervertebral disc. Okay. A few more here. You know what? That's enough. <laughs> uh, those other slides, you have chapters on all of these in your a &P career. I think that's enough for a quiz on Monday, unless you want more. Uh, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll have uh, some lab time. <laughs>